Good day, I'm Dr. LaRue and I will be speaking with you about the knee examination. Just a quick disclaimer, this talk is mostly focused on the ligaments and meniscus because it's focused on uh, undergraduate students and it's by no means uh, uh, an encompassing talk. So the anatomy, I know you guys are jumping for joy when you see this slide, but if you know the, examine, the anatomy of the four biggest ligaments in the knee, it will make your examinations much easier to remember and to understand. So bear with me. The anterior cruciate ligament, the anterior part of it refers to the attachment and not the origin. So it originates on the posterior aspect of the femur, but it attaches on the anterior aspect of the tibia. And also, if it's ruptured, as you can see in the right side, it'll give you anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. So remember, anterior cruciate ligament attaches anteriorly on the tibia and it gives you anterior translation. So the opposite is true for the posterior cruciate ligament or the PCL. Uh, although it originates anteriorly on the femur, it attaches posterior on the tibia and it gives you posterior translation when ruptured. Same with uh, lateral collateral ligament and medial collateral ligament, LCL and MCL. The medial collateral ligament is on the medial side of the knee and it will give you medial opening of the knee when torn. The LCL, lateral collateral ligament, is situated on the lateral aspect of the knee and it will give you lateral opening of the knee with a varus producing force. History is not uh, part of this, uh, uh, this talk, but with a concise history, you would be able to direct your suspicion to a certain structure in the knee that's off. So a few quick tips. If a cruciate ligament is, is torn, it's, most, it's normally an athlete that will tell you there was an acute traumatic injury during the sports event. The, he, he might have heard a clicking, not a clicking, a, a snap or a tear or a crack and the knee swelled up immediately and he was not able to continue play. With a collateral ligament tear, the patient might say someone ran or tackled his knee from the left, from the medial or the lateral side and it forced his knee open on the opposite side. With meniscus pathology, patients might say, yeah, he, he can remember an acute traumatic event, but the knee didn't swell up immediately. It swelled up the evening or the next morning or maybe not at all. And the pathognomonic signs or symptoms of that is a clicking of the knee, locking of the knee, and patient might be unable to completely extend or flex his knee, which would indicate a very large trapped meniscus tear. And then the patient might say he's experiencing pain jogging downhill or walking downstairs, which, which would indicate patellofemoral pathology, but that's not part of this talk. So for the orthopedic exam, you follow a general approach, which is slightly different from your internal medicine approach. And you follow the, the five steps. Gait, make the patient walk first. Then for the knee, you make them lie down and go over to look, feel, move, and then special exams. With gait, um, you ask the patient to walk away from you and then uh, turn around or walk back towards you. But importantly, some students want to go over to the inspection component or look component of the exam and say, I see this, I see that, I see that. This is not where you do it. You just comment on the gait. You, uh, and what you expect with a knee injury is an gait. The definition of an gait is increased cadence on the affected side basically means the patient wants to spe spend less time on the painful limb. So he swings it through quickly, the stance phase is quicker, and then he spends more time on the opposite side, which is less painful. Also keep in mind, the patient might have other uh, gait patterns, but that probably is not caused by the knee injury. On inspection, now you may ask the patient either to stand in front of you with adequate exposure, or you may ask the patient to lie down. Uh, and you can use your own approach, but it's a good idea to start from the outside and work in. You start, you can comment on skin. What's the condition of the skin? 
Dissipation of skin infections, maybe an abrasion or a cut from the acute injury. Are there previous scars? The patient might have had a knee operation when he was young, etc. Then muscle. Um, look for atrophy of the muscle, which might indicate a chronicity of the injury. Any <clears throat> acute swellings, which might indicate a muscle tear, etc. Mm. And then try and imagine what's going on deep inside the leg. Is there a gross varus or valgus alignment deformity, which might mean normal, might be from before, or it might be from an acute collateral ligament injury. Look at the posture of the leg. Is the patient able to fully, not fully extend the leg when you ask him to lie down? It might indicate um, a bucket handle or a meniscus tear, a block to extension. And then if there's a gross swelling in the knee, you, you can also notice that and comment on it. And the feel component, uh, do the neurovascular exam first. Why is it the most important? No, because otherwise you'll forget to do it. So start this, will say, okay, I'm, I'm feeling the pulses, Mr. Examiner, dorsalis pedis pulse, check the sensation of part of the leg and it's done, it's out of the way. Then you go back and you, you can check for an effusion in the knee. There's two tests, the patella tap test. How that works is the patella is normally sitting right on top of the femur. So if you're pushing down on it, um, you're not creating a tap sound or feel. With an effusion, the patella lifts off the femur, and if you tap on it and press it down, you can feel and sometimes hear a clicking sound. You can also do the sweep test, where you sweep on the outside of the knee, you uh, translate the fluid over to the medial side of the knee, and you can see the medial bulge of fluid increasing. And then tenderness, do this structured. You can follow your own approach, but follow anatomy. You can start proximal and work your way downwards. Uh, but specific things that you must palpate for is joint lines. Palpate the medial joint line, the lateral joint line. This is indicative of, indicative of meniscus pathology. Uh, palpate the medial and lateral structures over the patella, femur, and tibia to uh, possibly diagnose collateral or uh, patellofemoral ligament injuries or tears. Palpate the patella itself, go down with the, the patella tendon, the tibial tubercle, and the posterior side of the knee. Uh, there's two references, or you can, uh, you can Google or YouTube uh, videos of surface anatomy of the knee, and then it will make more sense and will also be easier to remember. Okay, uh, with the move component. Um, start with the joint above and the joint below. The hip, uh, mostly because uh, pain or tenderness in the hip may radiate down to the knee and it might be experienced as knee pain, but when uh, in reality it's hip pain. And also an abnormal, an injury or abnormal posture of the ankle joint might appear to be a knee problem, but it's actually in the ankle. Ask the patient to do a straight leg raise or to raise the lower part of the leg to assess the extensor mechanism and then do a range of motion of the knee. Start from full extension which is graded as zero degrees and then ask the patient to flex as much as he can. Uh, note any limits to extension uh, so if he doesn't achieve this full range it might be due to meniscus injury. Also see if there's any tenderness uh, with deep flexion which is a sensitive test for meniscus pathology. Now, anti-special uh, examinations, uh, which would be easy for you to remember after we uh, quickly spoke about anatomy. So for the anterior cruciate ligament, do the anterior draw test, which would be anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. As you can see in this video, bear in mind this is a very uh, exaggerated example and, and normally it's more subtle than this. And you sometimes you even have to compare uh, the injured side with the contralateral side to see if the anterior translation is uh, abnormal. The knee is kept in 90 degrees of flexion importantly. If you do the anterior draw test with the knee in 30 degrees of flexion, that is called the Lachman test and it's uh, more sensitive than the anterior draw test. For the posterior cruciate ligament you do the posterior draw test with the knee, also the knee in 90 degrees of flexion and you push the tibia posterior in relation to the femur. 
for the medial collateral ligament. We want to see if the knee opens up on the medial side. So importantly, specific for the MCL, the knee must be kept in 30 degrees of flexion. That is specific for the MCL. You put your hand on the outside of the knee and you see if you can push and stretch the medial side of the knee to open. You can also put the upper leg down on the bed for extra stabilization. Lateral collateral ligament, as you can see in this picture, put your hand on the inside of the ligament and you try to open the lateral part of the knee. And this is also done in 30 degrees of flexion, specifically for the LCL. Meniscus, the most sensitive uh, tests for the meniscus are joint line tenderness when you palpate and tenderness with deep flexion of the knee. So these are the most sensitive tests. You can also uh, take note. There are four or five special examinations like the McMurray test, the Apley's grinding test and the Thessaly test. But the basis of all these tests is basically uh, to trap a piece of torn meniscus between the femur and the tibia and to create tenderness. But uh, remember to note the most sensitive tests are joint line tenderness with palpation and tenderness when you, with deep flexion of the knee. So in summary, uh, do you start with gait, then make the patient lie down, do the look component, skin, muscle and bone, feel for uh, the neurovascular status, then an effusion, then tenderness, then move, straight leg raise and uh, full extension to full flexion and then do your special tests for ACL, PCL, LCL, MCL and the meniscus. Thank you.